the early season offensive struggles for the Toronto Blue Jays continue again tonight. You know, and I don't care if we're in this season thinking, well, let's take positives out of games. I understand that, but it's never fun to get walked up. Blue Jays lose 3-2 in nine innings to the Cleveland Indians, and Carlos Santana hits a walk-off home run in the bottom of the ninth inning off Joe Biagini. Um, when you throw a fastball over a middle of the plate to a good hitter, uh, they're not going to miss it too often, and he doesn't. But like I said, the offensive struggles continue. The Jays. Two runs on three hits. The two runs were a two-run shot by Freddie Galvis. One of the only guys who's shown any sort of consistency with the bat this year. You know, I mean, he was, uh, where was he? One for three in the game today. He had uh, the home run, the couple RBIs. Great job there. He's hitting 320 on the year. But everybody else is down there in the 100s, right? Am I, is anybody else over 200? Well, Hanson, but he's only hitting 250 in, in very limited at-bats. Uh, who else we got here? Uh, Drury's hitting 212. Urania's hitting 467. He was one for three in the game today. Had a double there in the eighth inning where the Jays had runners at first and third with two out and couldn't get the job done. We've noticed that runners in scoring position has been an issue now. You go back to the game yesterday. Two opportunities with the bases loaded. You don't get it done. Today, first and third, eighth inning. Big situation. Two out, can't get that clutch hit. You know, and it's it's not that this team, you know, well, we, we can sit here and say, well, they're not as talented as they once were. <laughs> and I'm not going to sit here and argue that because they aren't. But it just sucks to watch this team get three hits a night. And, and, and like, I swear that for the first, like, two or three times already this year, we've been threatening no hitters giving up. You know, it's just, it's just the way it's felt there early on. Now, now that that miserable stuff's out of the way, positives, 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 positives. Okay. Well, Freddie Galvis has hit, hit a second home run of the year, two-run shot. Great job there. And Rowdy Telez scores on the play. Uh, where was he here? Big Rowdy. Uh, so, yeah, he had three strikeouts in the game. He was 0 for 3. Not good for Rowdy. But he did walk, and he scored on the home run. Brighton and Drew with a hit. He was 1 for 4. Galvis obviously with the home run. Urania with the hit. And uh, that's really about it offensively. But pitching-wise, Trent Thornton, in his second start of his big league career, was not as good as he was in his first start, but wasn't bad. He gave the Jays a chance to win. And that's all we ask. In five and two-thirds, he gave up three hits, two walks, two runs, and seven strikeouts. That's not a bad outing at all. Now, he gives way to Javi Guerra, who, I got to say, other than one bad pitch, was that uh, th was it the 3-1 breaking ball in, in that Detroit series with the bases loaded, which I didn't agree with. Other than that pitch, and then the Greasy's not single, which ideally wasn't his fault either, he's been very good as Javi Guerra. He went an inning in the third, didn't walk a batter, didn't give up a hit, didn't give up a run, and his ERA is 1-9-3. Uh, as a Blue Jay so far. Great job there. Daniel Hudson, it's nice to see him get out there and put up a zero. He went a clean inning, no hits, walked a guy, but struck out a batter and didn't give up anything else. ERA, I think he dropped like three points. It's down to 10.38. Yikes. And Big Joe Biagini gives up the home run. Big Joe, when you give a fast, for him, for Big Joe Biagini, he has two areas he can go to. He can be high and out of the out of the zone, but just out, right? Because he's got that big, big, you know, he's huge on the mound, basically. So he's got that downward action. And if he can still paint the top area of the plate, you're going to get a lot of swing and miss. And if he can aim down as well as way how far it goes down, it's a dynamite pitch. The problem with that pitch to Santana was it was not down. It was not up. It was right down the middle and a little bit up. So Santana, a very good hitter, was able to get on top of it and drill it out of the ballpark for a home run. It happens. People make mistakes. Oh, well. Joe Biagini's ERA is 1.93. I'm not going to complain. Now, for this team, it's tricky. You know, at the very best, at the, at the very, very best, you can get a split in the series. But you have to win the next two games. And the two starters in that game is Thomas Pannone going tomorrow. Obviously, Sean Reed Foley at the last start who came in for uh, Clayton Richard, who hit the disabled list, or sorry, the injured list. And uh, Carlos Carrasco is going to be on the mound for the Cleveland Indians. He had a terrible first start, so he's looking to rebound and have a good outing. 
And in the finale, we have uh, Marcus Stroman versus Mike Clevenger. That is going to be one heck of a pitching matchup. Both pitchers are very, very good. And it's basically a battle of the aces, really. I mean, uh, you know, with, with Cleveland being injured the way they are and, and, and the Blue Jays just not really being all that great right now and those two pitchers being as good as they are, you might see another one nothing game, a 2-1 game, a, one of those types of games. Even a 3-2, you know, walk-off or something along those lines. I don't know. But all I know for this Jays team is, look, Jays fans, let's have a real talk for a second. Anybody who say, oh, this team sucks, this team sucks, all that kind of stuff, you're not wrong. The Jays are 3-6 and six on the year so far. But if you had any expectations coming into the year, I mean, clearly the fans who show up to Rogers Center have no idea. They're either there to watch uh, uh, the younger players or they're there to have a night out. I don't think they're there to watch this team go for a playoff run. We're all expecting the month of April to be bad. That's what we expect. But come May, when that year of eligibility for arbitration becomes a thing, and if Vladimir Guerrero Jr., I think he's playing in, I think he played in A-ball yesterday or in Dunedin yesterday. Look, the AAA season's already gotten underway. The AA season, all the minor league seasons have gotten underway now, except for the lower levels. But, you know, guys like Bo Bichette, guys like, you know, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., these guys could be up here come May. And it'll change the entire culture. Not only with the fan base, but the style of play. You know why? And listen to me for a second. When you look at the Jays' lineup for a given night, do you see any threat? I'm like, well, yeah, Randall Gritchick can run into one here and there. Teoscar Hernandez hasn't hit a home run yet, but he can. Right, until that's a big fella, he can hit a home run here and there. But when you when you pencil in a guy like Vladimir Guerrero Jr. or Bo Bichette, you are thinking, oh, I can't watch watch this guy hit. Oh, he's going to do something big here. You have that thought of, I can't wait to watch this guy. We don't have that right now. In previous years, we said, oh, I can't wait to watch Jose. I can't wait to watch Edwin, Donaldson, Tulo, Russell Martin even. You know, we don't have those guys now. So for the fans, they ain't going because they're like, I don't even know half the guys on this team. You know, and for, for talent-wise, it's just not there right now. The Jays have one of the top five minor league systems in the league. Be patient, Jays fans. The Astros did it. The Cubs did it. All these teams have done it. They've gone through this rebuild, retool, whatever you want to call it. And it turned into a World Series for both of those teams. The Jays just got to build their prospect system, which they already have, and it looks amazing right now, and just keep growing, keep getting better. You know, Jays fans, last thing I'm going to say here, because I didn't really want to talk about this game too much because it kind of sucked. What I do on a daily basis to keep myself sane when it comes to the Toronto Blue Jays is I have my phone, and I have a bunch of tabs wide open. And you know what I have in those taps? The Bison Scores, Hampshire Fisher Cats, Dunedin Blue Jays, Lance Signal Nuts, and even teams below. You know why? If I go on there and I see a 3-for-4 game by Boba Shed, I sit back and I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. You know? And it kind of erases our feeling about why this Jays team is so bad. If you do, if you do that, guys, you might be able to survive the 162 games because that's the only way I can do it. All right, you know what, guys? That's gonna do it for this one. You guys enjoy this video, even though my not watch was about the game. But do you really want to talk about a three-two walk-off uh, loss where uh, you get three hits and a two-run shot from Freddie Galvis? No. You, why would you want to talk about that mess? So let's talk about the positives. All right, we had a few positives in the game. Now let's talk about how to keep ourselves sane for the season. And that's my thought towards you guys. I want to hear. I'm going to hear your guys' thoughts towards how you guys are going to be getting through the 162 game season. I gave you guys mine. 
And um, I'm just hoping the Leafs and Raptors go on till June because then we'll be able to be okay until then, even though <laughs> it'll still stress us out like crazy. All right, so you know what, guys? Like I said, that is going to do it for this one. You guys enjoy this video, and uh, you guys didn't really enjoy the game today. Smack that like button. I do appreciate that, except for Trent Thornton's good start. Like I said, hit that like button. All that's great stuff, guys. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below, guys, what you think of the video, the game, like I said, your thoughts on how you're going to stay sane this entire season for the Blue Jays. Because I want to hear your guys, maybe things I want to try. You know, I want to hear your guys' thoughts towards what you're going to do to last this season. Because it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough, people. All right? As Mike Babcock said to the Leafs when, the, when he got brought on, there's going to be pain. And if Charlie Montoyo could say that, oh, I think he would. It's going to be a lot of tough times for this Jays team this year. we got to deal with it we got to think about the future. Look at the future, even. If you want to live stream some <laughs> Fisher, Cats, or Bison's games, if, that, if that's even possible, do so. Do anything you can to keep yourself okay as the chase season <laughs> progresses. All right? So, guys, like I, like I said in the last video, I'm going to do it again here. Check out Blue Jay Center on Instagram. The most, uh, what, followed it's Blue Jays fan page on Instagram uh, it is ran by the main man himself, Mo Buckets. You've seen him in the comment section. You've you've heard him uh, on the um, on the podcast a little bit. His questions been in there. We're planning on getting him on the podcast soon enough to talk about the Blue Jays and get his thoughts and everything that's going on in those weeks. It might be a weekly thing. We'll try and figure things out when it comes to that kind of stuff. Talking to him as of right now. But guys, go check his thing out on Instagram. If you guys do have Instagram, check it out. Blue Jay Center. He does the updates. He does the final scores. You know, he, he posts good pictures as well. It's really quality stuff. Please, please, please go check it out, guys. It's a lot of great work, all right? And um, Evan and I will talk to you guys podcast edition. It'll be either Wednesday or Thursday. Link is in the description for the podcast channel, guys, and for the podcast itself on iTunes. Twitter is also down below. Follow up. Send me a DM. Do all that great stuff, and I will talk to you guys. It'll be Leafs edition Saturday night as they are in Montreal taking on the Canadians in the final game of the regular season tomorrow night, people, and then we can turn all our eyes to the Boston Bruins, even though all of our eyes have been on them for the last month. But officially, we can look at the Boston Bruins and say, all right, here we go. All right, so Saturday night is the final game of the season at the Bell Centre in Montreal, 7 o'clock puck drop. Frederick Anderson and um, uh, Carey Price are the expected starters. By the way, uh, if you guys are still watching and you're Leaf fans, and if you didn't hear about Garrett Sparks, there was a little fiasco going on there. Michael Hutchison is going to be the backup for the Leafs in the playoffs. Oh, boy. Big drama there. But I think it's a good move by the Leafs. I really, I really do think so. All right. And so as for the Toronto Raptors, their next game is Sunday afternoon, literally noon p.m. tip-off at Scotiabank Arena, the final game of the uh, of the home schedule of the regular season for the Toronto Raptors. Two games to go. The next one is on Sunday against Miami at Scotiabank Arena. They're desperate. We're not. They're going to come out flying. Let's see what the Raptors can do there. And as for the, Le uh, as for the Blue Jays, like we talked about, they're going to be taking on the Cleveland Indians in Game 3 of the four-game set tomorrow afternoon, 4-10 first pitch in Cleveland at Progressive Field. Thomas Pannone, Carlos Carrasco, the expected starters, the, basically the guaranteed starters in tomorrow's game. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you guys then.